I have here a battery, which is my source of EMF. It's the thing that provides the energy for a circuit. Now, if, for example, uh, you had a hacksaw, a bit of spare time, and this is something I don't recommend you do, uh, what you can actually do is look inside one of these big units. And if you do that, what you can find is inside this battery is a number of cells. Now, uh, basically one end is connected to the negative and one is the positive. And if we look at these individual cells that make up the battery, we can maybe look at the various chemicals that these are made out of. Now, if we think about these chemicals, because there's a difference in the electrical potential between one end and the other, we therefore have a source of EMF. And it's this kind of uh, chemical thing here, this kind of the different layers of chemicals and their difference in electrical potential, which drives the, the electrons around the circuit. And this video here is really where we explore about what happens inside the cell and something which we call the internal resistance. So here we have my cell, and effectively every time that we have a current moving through this cell, what we're doing is it's, it's basically got to move through a load of stuff. The electrons, they don't just get from one side to the other, and therefore this cell has its own internal resistance. Now we can draw that as basically a cell that looks a bit like this, and what it has is its own internal uh, resistor. Now, uh, effectively, what we have here is this whole thing here represents my, my normal cell. And this little uh, resistor here effectively represents the fact that inside any power source, we have a load of stuff that the electrons need to fight through as they go through that. And I'm going to give this the resistance of little r. Now, little r is going to be my internal resistance. Now this just might be part of a bigger circuit and we might have uh, a various kind of uh, components in that circuit. And what I'm going to do is represent all of these components with this big resistor here. And I'm going to call this capital R, which is effectively the external resistance, a resistance of everything else in that circuit. What I have here is my source of EMF. And this is the maximum amount of energy given uh, to each unit of charge. Now, in reality, although we might have maybe a high EMF, not all of the energy is actually given into the circuit because some of the energy is used up as these charge carriers move uh, through that, uh, that power source. And what we can then also look at is actually the potential difference in the rest of the circuit, which is our value of V. So what I have here is I could basically measure across the terminals of this cell, I could actually measure the potential difference. And what we have here is what we call our terminal PD. And this is effectively uh, the output that we get from that cell. Now the important thing to note is that the more current flows around the circuit, the greater the effect of this internal resistance has. And the greater the internal resistance or the greater the current that flows, the less or the smaller the terminal PD actually is. Now the important thing to note is that this terminal PD V is always going to be smaller than the actual source of EMF. And the reason for this is that every time we have a current flowing and we have an internal resistance, some of the energy that is available to the circuit is used up by the charge carriers moving through that battery. And there's a number of equations that we can use to actually investigate this in a bit more detail. So I can write that the EMF is equal to the terminal potential difference plus I times R. And again, you know, think about uh, Kirchhoff's second law, uh, the PD across this plus the PD across that is gonna be equal to this EMF. And effectively what we call this uh, uh, this part here is what we call the lost volts. So these volts are basically lost within the internal supply of that uh, power source and they're not useful in the circuit. We, we also have the terminal potential difference and of course this E stands over here for the electromotive force. But of course we know that V is equal to I times R and this really important equation comes up all the time. And we can also write this top equation as E is equal to I R plus I little r, where again this little r is equal to the internal resistance. Now because we have uh, a common factor which is I, we can rewrite this equation as the EMF is equal to I multiplied by r plus r. So what we have here are two forms of the equation. The EMF is equal to the uh, terminal PD plus the lost volts, which is equal to the internal resistance multiplied by the current flowing in that circuit. And also uh, E is equal to I R plus R. Now it's this one here which is really important. As we have a greater and greater current, what we find is that for a certain value of EMF, 
so the actual terminal PD goes down. And if we have circuits where we need a large current, perhaps maybe a car starter motor, the important thing is that we need to minimize the value of this internal resistance to make it as low as possible. So when we have a large current being drawn, we still get uh, a large enough uh, terminal PD to actually allow that circuit to work. So one thing we can do is set up a circuit with a cell that has an internal resistance, R, and we can put a voltmeter across it to measure the terminal PD. We can put in a variable resistor and an ammeter. And what we can then do is start to investigate the internal resistance and the original EMF of this cell. Now what we find is that the greater the current drawn, the lower the terminal PD, and we get a line that looks something a bit like this. The greater the current that flows in the circuit, the smaller the terminal PD that we actually measure, as this internal resistance has a bigger and bigger effect. So I'd like to consider this equation here, where the EMF is equal to the terminal PD plus I times the internal resistance. Now, uh, because we've plotted V on the y-axis, and i on the x-axis, I can rearrange this into the form of y is equal to mx plus c. And if I do that, we get the equation v is equal to minus ri plus e. The reason being that on the y-axis we have v values, we've plotted i on the x-axis, and this means then that the y-intercept is equal to our value of the EMF, which is over here. It also means that the gradient of that line is equal to minus r. So if we know the gradient of this line here, that's going to be equal to minus the internal resistance. Uh, and this graph here is really important and it also shows how important y equals mx plus c is in many, many physical things. We can measure the current, we can measure the terminal PD, and this then allows us to measure that internal resistance of the cell and also what the true EMF is. The EMF being the, the maximum energy supplied per unit charge when the current actually flowing through that uh, cell is equal to zero.